What is art? A question I get asked very often and struggle to answer every time. I see myself uh, an interventionist, uh, even though I'm labeled as a street artist very often. What I seek in my art uh, is not the image which I deliver of my work, it's the reaction from the people and connection with the viewer which I expect. What I do is uh, inspired by my experience, my everyday life, my observations, my observations of my environment, of the communities I'm in, the people that I meet, the architecture that I see, it all reflects in my work. And uh, with my work, I expect the viewer to question these things, question my observations uh, in our environment. That my aim is to take people out of their everyday experiences and, uh, and spark a creative thought, spark a, a curiosity, spark uh, an emotion within themselves which would uh, deliver some sort of response in their own creative ways. Some of you might know me for the piece that I did a couple of years ago here in Lithuania, where I'm from, on a cinema called Lithuania. And uh, this piece has provoked quite uh, controversial reactions uh, due to the reaction of a local graffiti community, which made the piece look more like this very soon after it's been painted. I get a lot of questions as, how do I feel about it? Was I offended? Uh, and uh, what's my response to the actions of a local artist? And the thing is, I, I've been overwhelmed with this. I actually, uh, this uh, reaction was something which, uh, which is what I seek in my work. The creative response, the having seen people to react to my work and take their action in response to it, have delivered a great conversation about the street art, about public art, what is art and what is graffiti and what should be legal and should not in, uh, in the public space. However, to explain more where I'm coming from, I probably would have to rewind a little bit um, a couple of years uh, before I started working so extensively in the street. I'm very passionate about travel. I visit a lot of places. I travel a lot, and uh, one of the regions I'm very much interested in is Southeast Asia. I traveled there first in 2008, starting with the island of Sumatra in Indonesia, um, with the uh, first expectation to find this uh, tropical paradise, the island of adventure and wonder. I end up in a place which is extremely overpopulated, malnourished by poverty and corruption. Um, and that was very shocking to me to find to find out, and uh, however, surprising thing was that I found communities who are extremely welcoming and friendly and open-minded. And connecting with these communities, I ended up having hundreds and hundreds of portraits, which I took with my camera and carried away throughout my trip until I got settled down in Penang Island in Malaysia. While living in Malaysia since 2010, I've been creating the street interventions. Uh, bringing out my experience, which I gathered throughout my travels, the people which I met and which left the deep experience on me. I, I wanted to connect, uh, to express my connection with them in the public space in hope that somehow that would be communicated to the viewer and make an impact, the emotional impact which I really seek in my work. One of the more recognized pieces was this piece on a, in Penang of children on bicycle which was uh, a result of my thoughts about, the, about how locals see the environment, how locals see their community and what they see in the streets and the charm of the town that they live in. I found that a lot of people travel in their cars from one shopping mall to another without really being aware of what's going on in the right in front of them and uh, seeing the beauty and the charm of the places that we live in. I thought if I would put this piece with a bicycle in it, it might encourage a person or two to come out to that street and walk around it actually, or, or cycle around it, and to see, to see the beauty of it. And uh, very soon after, I got a response from locals of people flooding in groups to take images, to take pictures with the artwork, to, to cycle then, walk around and explore. More and more artwork started popping up in the area. More creative people started reaching out to me saying how inspired they were to do something in the public space, do something outdoor where people see it and the people could travel with the bicycles and explore the wonders of the city. Years later, the, the piece is still there 
and now the car traffic has been replaced with bicycle traffic, and <laughs> and uh, this this is example of the breaking point in uh, in my creative career in my in my work where I understood how powerful the artwork can be. Not the image, not the picture that we create, but the emotional connection of the art, the emotional connection which you put in, the thought that you put in in your art, how that connects to the people and how people respond to it. I understood the power of it and the effect and that my actions can somehow provoke other people's actions. And uh, living more and learning uh, in the region and learning more about the communities and the environment that you experience uh, this uh, phenomenon, as people call it, uh, transboundary haze. Uh, sad thing, uh, rather inconvenient. Uh, the sky gets cloudy a couple of months a year, uh, bringing the haze from Indonesia, which travels across the borders to Singapore, to Malaysia, to Thailand clouding the sky for three, four months a year. It become an everyday experience for people. People just carry on their lives. It's slightly inconvenient sometimes, sometimes it's more, but, uh, but people live with it, so they die. And that affected my work a lot, that affected my thoughts a lot, and, uh, and what my experience is. Every decade or so, the, the levels of pollution reach a critical level, and um, Singapore gets paralyzed. So does Malaysia. The airports get shut down, the schools get closed down, hospitals are overwhelmed with people with lung diseases. And in 2015, we had a tragically hot year with extremely prolonged hot season, and uh, that resulted in rather catastrophic results. That put the issue on the global media. Uh, there were reports reporting up to hundreds of thousands of deaths um, uh, in the region, and uh, especially st uh, striking a lot of the uh, core regions in Malaysia and Indonesia. And uh, having, uh, hearing all that about, about Indonesia, about the, the region which uh, really inspired and affected me a lot, especially the Sumatra Island, has, so, has inspired me to channel my creative energy, channel my thoughts, and channel my work to, to the cause. And I came up with a project, Splash and Burn, uh, which I name in response of a slash and burn activity, which is a, a way of agriculture and preparation of land by burning the land, which is the major reason of the haze which we get in the region. For you to better understand what I'm talking about, this is a map of, uh, of part of uh, Indonesia, the, the part that I'm talking about. I stay in Malaysia at the top of a map, just under there is the island of Sumatra, and the uh, neighboring island of Borneo, for you to better understand the proportion of it, it's not the tiny tropical islands which might, we might imagine. This is a huge territory, and Borneo Island is actually bigger than the France. And uh, so having that region set on fire has a massive impact on an entire region. So I started researching more about, uh, about what are the reasons and major causes to the effect which we're getting every year. And I found out uh, that the uh, palm oil industry has a lot to do with that. And so, so I started my research. Uh, as I started my research, I tried to find the maps, tried to find the data, the information, where it's all coming from, and I just get more and more confused. This is a map of uh, um, allocated plantation. That's a map of palm oil plantations, which I could find online. Uh, according to, to the governments of Malaysia and Singapore. However, uh, researching more, I found out that ag agricultural land in Indonesia looks more like this, uh, which is, uh, looks relatively big to the proportion of the protected forest areas which we have left in the islands. This is very new industry. The palm oil industry have been there uh, for the last 30 years, uh, has been started to grow extensively for, for the last 30 years, and it's uh, the most uh, fastest growing commodity in the world at the moment. As researching these maps, I would get more and more confused, reading more and more about media. I had controversial information just like flooding my mind. I could not re understand what it is about, and I decided this is the time when I have to go back to Sumatra and see it for myself uh, once again, the, the subject that I'm talking about. The moment you flew into Sumatra, you see fields and fields of palm oil plantation, and it's very rare that you see uh, any bit of uh, 
forests or, or cities uh, in the area. The moment I land, I connected with a number of people working in environmental organizations, activists, uh, NGOs, and I had meetings with them just talking, uh, having conversations and discussing the issues, the problems that affect them as as a community in Sumatra, the, the moment you step into the first office and you see an oxygen mask in the corner of a, bill, of a room waiting for the burning season, you understand the severity of the situation and how affected people are and how they are forced to just pass their lives and live for their cause. However, once again, connecting to these people there, you find the most inspiring individuals, the most inspiring communities who do so much work to protect and fight for it. And their response to my visit, their response to my ideas was really overwhelming. How they saw this as an uh, as opportunity to talk about what they care, to connect with the outside, because uh, they really very much isolated from the world. Even though Europe is the second biggest market for the palm oil industry, very little of us know about the effects of it that we are causing by, by little actions we do every day, by, by eating that potato chip or brushing our teeth. Uh, it's, uh, the product is in everything. Uh, palm oil product is uh, in everything. Our paper is made from acacia trees grown in the region. And rarely that we think about our connection to the community Globally, uh, we see our neighbors, but, but we rarely think about our ripple effect of our actions to the global community and the global environment. Inspired by that, there was only one thing for me to do. I, I did the thing which I knew the best, and I started making art. I started painting the paintings inspired by my experience there and what I learned, inspired by all these conversations and all this information which I gathered there. I stayed in Sumatra and started working on the series of paintings. Uh, throughout that process, I reached out to a number of artists overseas, asking them if they would be willing to actually contribute to the cause somehow. And I had incredible response once again from creatives all over the world and uh, and people started flooding to Sumatra. I had more than 10 artists joining me on this project, on this project to create their art and communicate their passion for the communities and the environment in the area to the, to the audience. This is a piece by Italian artist Pixel Pancho where he depicted uh, orangutans, one of the endangered species uh, uh, common in the area. Uh, as, a, as robots, and he placed them in public spaces, in parks, to communicate and remind people of how close we are to losing these fascinating creatures. Uh, so did the artist Strzok from Norway. He traveled uh, all the way to Bikutilavang village, which is bordering village of, uh, of massive fields of palm oil plantations, with a national park. And he did this uh, piece on a uh, billboard, which used to be uh, gateway to the national park, and now it's just rusty old billboard in front of the palm oil plantation office. Number, a number of artists such as Bibi Chun from Malaysia, Gabriel Pitcher from UK, Axel Void from US came out all the way from US and spent weeks living in the tiny little houses with workers of plantation, exploring the everyday life of the communities who have none of an environment but plantations itself the lives of children who have never seen anything else but uh, palm oil fields. He, he stayed with communities, interacted with them, talked the issues that they find important, and, uh, and response from the locals was overwhelming. The welcome we got from, from people and the, uh, seeing how eager they were to communicate their issues, their everyday life, their everyday habits. They wanted to be connected to the people outside. They knew the product that they work on, the job that they do is for someone far, far out there in Europe, but they have no way to communicate that. And seeing these people coming there and actually showing their interest, showing that they care, was very inspiring to them as well. So it was to us. Artist uh, Isa Cordal from Spain, artist Mark Jenkins, uh, uh, both of them have explored the impact of the uh, of the industries uh, and of the global market to the environment and uh, how the, how deserted the environment is in in the result of these uh, of these agricultural processes. 
they placed uh, the installations uh, far out, uh, um, even though these street artists who, who always work in the communities, in the public space, they place the installations far out in the fields uh, to never be seen by a public eye, just to highlight the issue, how little do we know and how, how much information do we get uh, of, of the situation out there, which is very much dependent on us and on our everyday actions. Having such an overwhelming response, our core idea was communicate the issue, raise up a dialogue, bring, bring out the issue back to the global media, back to the global eye, uh, outside of the burning season, not waiting for the disaster to happen, but starting the conversation way prior. It's very little time that we have left to protect and to save whatever uh, we have to treasure there, out there in the region, and we have to see ourselves as a global community. We have to see ourselves as citizens. And uh, I feel we had the response for, we launched this project through Guardian newspaper, which later caused by a great response from uh, many different media outlets. And BBC, we had a support from Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation spreading the word and spreading the message about it. And once again, I understood what art is to me. The, the art of communication, the art of bringing dialogue, the art which connects people, the art which uh, delivers the message and raises the dialogues for us to be more conscious about what we do, to be more conscious about consequences of our action, to be more aware of our environments, not just the immediate environment in our communities, but a global environment as such. And, uh, and this brings me back to everything that I love about art. To, this is one of the pieces I did in the collaboration with a local graffiti artist, Smain Tu from Medan, Sumatra, which I want to leave you with. And, uh, uh, which uh, brings me back to to my passion, to everything what I do. I want I want you all to see the art which is beyond the image, to see the art which is beyond what we see. I want you to feel the art, to get affected, to the, get inspired, and express the, the things which you inspire in your own creative way. Thank you very much.